Hello, everybody. You're listening to Accounting Makes Sense, an MJ the Tutor podcast, and I'm your host, MJ. In this podcast, we are focused on helping accounting students all over the world by offering a quick warm up on various accounting and business topics, hoping to generate bigger discussions and conversations around them. If you are a SEMA case study student, then this episode is for you. For this episode, we're going to look at a couple of initial thoughts or tidbits on the MCS pre scene material for the May 2023 exam session. This is a similar episode format to the ones I did last year, as well as for February 2023 sitting, where I talk about some key points raised from the pre scene. Anyway, I hope you guys gain some helpful insights from these episodes to help you with your preparation. Again, I would just like to point out a disclaimer that these thoughts are simply my own opinion. You should not take these thoughts as the only important aspects of the pre-scene. There would be others. As you read through the pre-scene, you would also be able to glean for yourself other important factors to consider. My opinions here, or my thoughts here, are neither wrong nor right. They are simply here to offer help in analyzing situations as well as provide information from another angle. Okay, so as mentioned, our main reference for today is the May 2023 MCS pre-scene, which came out a few weeks ago. So hot off the press, I am going to offer four tidbits for today. You should take these as clues, for lack of a better word, clues into the world of the pre-scene company. Before we start with the tidbits, a small backgrounder is to introduce the pre-scene company that we have for May 2023. Our pre-scene company for this session is called Happywell. It is a quoted holiday package operator in the fictitious country called Westland. So let's start with the tidbits. The first tidbit to share is on the focus of operations and company structure. Happywell currently sells both online and physical. They have retail shops that cater for in-person needs of holiday makers, as well as online options for those who purchase online. But aside from how they deliver their products to the customers, something important to note is the mention of the different departments and who they report into. There is a lot of mention on how the company is structured from the aviation department to the hotels department to even the local experience department. You can almost see the functionality of the way it's structured. The headquarters are in Westland, but the different regions or locations are managed locally by hotel managers, etc., who then report to somebody in HQ. Aviation is a little different, but they work as a business unit who then report into HQ as well. This is not a bad setup. In fact, I'd say most of the pre-seen companies we've seen in the past is structured this way. If you are not familiar with functional structure, it is a structure which groups employees into different departments based on what they specialize in. For example, Airline employees of Happywell will be under the aviation department, hotel employees will be under the hotels department, and so on and so forth. The reason this is good is because it promotes specialization, speed, and clarity, just people knowing what they need to do. Of course, there's a bad side, and the bad side of functional structure tends to be that it is a bit difficult and disorganized when it comes to anything related to group projects shared company objectives, and basically just lack of coordination when something needs to be done across the company touching different departments. The second tidbit relates back to the first one, which talks about the structure, but this one is more focused on employees. This pre-scene seems very quiet about information on employees. Aside from talking about the HR department, what that department does in terms of recruiting and finding people, there is not a lot of mention as to employee sentiments about the company, which is kind of weird because if we really want to think about this, Happywell is a major employee-driven company. It works in the service industry. You can see it from the bookings process, customer support, aviation, hotel experience, tours. All these require customer-facing employees. So definitely employees are going to factor in as an important subject in this pre-scene. The fact that little has been mentioned about the different teams is to say the least intriguing. The third tidbit is a mention that Happywell is a vertically integrated organization. On its business model, this is part of value creation for Happywell. Now, what does it mean to be vertically integrated? 
In this scenario, Happy Well not only helps customers book their dream holiday, to some extent they provide that dream holiday to the customers. Happy Well has its own fleet of airlines, its own chain of hotels in the countries where they have holidays in, etc. Now, if you think about this, being vertically integrated means that one hand knows what the other hand is doing, or that's at least what the goal is for being vertically integrated. There is also better control on the quality of experience that customers have on these trips. Everything is seamless because Happy Well provides everything, as opposed to Happy Well booking for flights with another airline, booking room res reservations with another hotel. These tend to have issues because now Happy Well places quality of service and products on a third party like another airline or another hotel. The last tidbit is one on pricing. When you read the pre-scene, there is a section which talks about how the booking process happens and that each item being booked is not really individually priced for the customers. What generally happens is that the customer makes some standard choices with regards to their holidays, i.e. book the seats, book the room, book the tours, and then the final price is shown to the customer with no breakdown of how much is for the seats, how much is for the room, how much is for the tour. It sounds a little dodgy, but this practice is actually quite common in this industry. It's quite valid. So I can foresee questions on the case study touching upon pricing, be it talking about customers wanting more visibility, transparency on details, or perhaps losing sight of margins being made because the costs are not transparent enough. And that's it for this episode. I hope you were able to glean the same tidbits from the pre-scene as I did maybe even more. Keep on reading that pre-scene to gain a better understanding of the scenario. As always, I thank you for listening to Accounting Makes Sense. I am your host, MJ the Tutor. If you're keen to connect to be updated with the arrival of the next episode of this podcast or find SEMA resources online, please head on over to my website, www.mjthetutor.com. You can also hit subscribe on whichever platform you are using to listen to this podcast. If you want to connect on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the name MJ the Tutor. So I hope to see you again next time. Ciao for now!